So, not doing live. What kind of funny about that? But I, um, yeah, wanted to make sure it was good. <laughs> so I am sitting here in front of my tree. Um, my tree looks a little different this year. Uh, we didn't, I didn't use my um, angel topper. Um, Matt and I have um, been married for 25 years and that's how long we've had the angel and the angel was a little uh, So we changed it up a little bit. And so it's got um, all like all the crazy little, you know, Dr. Seuss looking things on the top. As you can see, I added the fuzzy little balls and then I also have the prize box under the tree. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, first thing my husband said was, where's the religion? I wish he'd said, where's Jesus and all this? Where's God and all this? He's here. And he's here in my heart and he is in everything that I'm choosing to do at this point in my life. 52 years old. Took me a while to, to get there, but I did. So, um, may not have an angel on top, but Jesus' birth, my savior, God giving his son for me, for my family, for my friends, that is what I'm celebrating. That's what I'm celebrating. Um, you see this guy here? Um, this guy right here, Bailey, was Matt's when he was little. <laughs> He's very old. We take care of him. We even put lights in him. I have memories like that all over my house right now. I have um, memories from my Christmases when I was growing up. My mom did an amazing job of making sure that my brother and I, I'm gonna take these off, had wonderful, wonderful Christmas celebrations. Um, they were always beautiful. I worked really hard to make sure that Connor, my only kid, he is 19, gonna be 20 in February, that he had wonderful, you know, Christmases to celebrate. There are no Christmas presents under my tree this year. There are not any, and I'm okay with that because, you know, I've realized that as hard as I tried to make Christmas special for my family, for Connor, I also failed him because I didn't put Christ first in Christmas. And, you know, thank goodness we have a forgiving God because I know that God will forgive me for that. I know he wishes that I had done things differently. I had a wonderful sister-in-law. I have a wonderful sister-in-law that's married to my brother. And I will never forget the Easter that she was driving down to Florida and she got there and she's like, yep, I told my kids about Easter Bunny. We're, we're not doing the Easter Bunny anymore. And the reason why she did it is because she realized as a young mom that her kids were not putting the purpose of Easter first. And I, I've had so many amazing people in my life that have, you know, unintentionally, you know, been a witness to me on how, you know, God would like for me to be. And I am so grateful and thankful for all of those people. Um, my friend, Jill Gudger, um, she, when I met her, I will never forget, you know, we would always go, you know, after church, we would go to the Allstate 
which is has the best orange rolls. And I remember we'd go in there and every single time before she would eat, you know, and she was in fourth grade because I was in fifth grade when I moved to Coleman and she would pray over her food. Visibly, quietly pray over her food. And this was someone that was one of my, you know, peers, someone that, you know, as a child, you know, when you're in fifth grade, I think you're like 11 or 10. And here she is sitting down to pray. And, you know, and, and it made me really think about Jesus. And I also became a Christian because of her influence and who she was at that time. And the great thing about Jill is she never changed, never changed. I changed, I gave in to peer pressure. I gave in to wanting to belong and um, yeah, crazy high school times. I'm going everywhere with this with you guys, but it's okay, that's okay. Cause this is what God wants me to do. And I know it is. He wants me to put myself on here for you guys so that maybe, just maybe, you will start thinking about God in your life and what he's doing in your life. And I don't know, I, I don't know. I don't know God's plan. I don't know God's plan for me, you, my family, but I know it's a good one. I know he's got a good plan. Even when I've gone through the, the crazy times in my life, you know, even when, you know, fighting depression, fighting anxiety, fighting insecurities growing up, God always, always had a plan for me. And I am so grateful and thankful that he shut doors that needed to be shut. He opened them when it was time for me to move on and walk through. And I know he's doing the same thing for you in your life, even if it doesn't feel like it. Even if you don't feel like right now that God is in your life and, and present around you. He's there, I promise you. And no matter what you're going through, whether it's an amazing time, a blessing right now, or COVID, or marriage problems. He has a plan for you, okay? So hang in there, I promise. He's got a plan for you. My devotional today, it was, okay, so Francis Chan is um, one of the ministers and that does a lot of the devotionals that we've, done with our group and I absolutely love his knowledge, his passion, um, his love for Christ. And one of the things that he was talking about in our devotional is, you know, do things become common? You know, do things become, hey, I love you, but you're going to have to wait. <laughs> do things, sit down with me then, sit down, sit down, sit down, lay down. Yes, no? Okay, I'm sorry, but my attention is needed. But basically, he's he's saying, come on, Calvin, honey. Come on, let's sit down. Okay, sit down, lay down, lay down. You guys, I love my fur babies. They give you unconditional love, don't they? So, basically, you know, things become common, right? So, like marriage. Matt and I have been married for 25 years. And, you know, in his, in, when he, Francis Chan, when he was doing the, um, his devotional, he was like, he went to a reunion. Somebody was like, hey, dude, how did you wind up with that wife? And he was like, what, am I that ugly? You know, I mean, he's not a bad looking guy, you know? And so he went back and looked and he was looking at it from a different perspective, a picture. And he was like, well, yeah, she is pretty hot. So how did I wind up? And, you know, Matt and I have been married for 25 years 
and my husband is a good looking guy, but I think that we've been around each other for so long that it's just, we forget to look at each other like that. You know, and it's, and God's kind of the same way, especially if you grow up in the church like I did, you know, you're, you know, I was submersed in the church. You know, I did um, children's choir, puppet ministry. I did the handbells. I did GAs. I did, you know, um, I, I just, I was always, my favorite Wednesday night suppers, Southern Baptist, you know what I'm talking about. You know, everybody brings their dishes in. You go down to the gymnasium, if your church has a gymnasium, and you know, good food, you get to run around and play with your friends. Um, Wednesday night suppers were my favorite. And I was blessed when I came to Houston, um, the church that I was going to had that as well. And so Connor got to experience that. Um, my best friend, um, her kids got to experience that. So, you know, I mean, you, you do it so much that does God become common? I'd be common, you know, I mean, but he does because it, it, you hear it every day. You, you become desensitized to it. So look at God again. Look at what he's done for you. Look at those doors he's open. You know, have you said thank you? Have you praised him for giving you those amazing blessings? Like those two that he's given you. And then the other one is, um, it's Christmas Eve. Today is December the 24th. Today is the, the day that Mary and Joseph were trying to find a place to stay, or I'm, you know, hopefully they had already gotten there and they were settled in the manger. You remember, I'm, I'm still learning about the Bible and about Jesus's life and um, like I didn't know there was 500 years between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I had no idea that there were five year, 500 years between 500 years where there was silence, where God did not talk to His people from the beginning, from the end of the New Testament. I mean, Old Testament to the beginning of the New Testament. I didn't know that. And then Jesus came in a manger. I couldn't imagine being Mary. I just, I, I just, I know the fear that I had when I had Connor, who's gonna be 20, I was so scared. And I wasn't scared of having him. I wasn't scared of him. Cause I mean, God's gonna, I knew God was gonna take care of that. It was the actually being the mom part. I was gonna be entrusted with this human. Was I gonna be a good enough mom? Was I going to be able to raise him to be a godly man? <gasps> to be, sorry, to be um, a godly man in a story. Was I going to raise him to be, you know, confident, to be a provider for his family? You know, was I going to raise him? the right way. And as soon as I saw him, it was like God said, oh, this is unconditional love, Stacy. This is how I feel about you. And God does. Just like my love that I have for Connor, a mom's love is, is, it's just different. And experiencing it myself, and I almost didn't, by the way, I almost didn't have kids. I really almost didn't have kids. I was going to that doctor's office and I decided, this is nuts, I don't need to be a mom. I couldn't imagine my life without my son. But the fear that I had felt prior to that was crazy. Um, I just, you know, I couldn't imagine what Mary was thinking or feeling. Um, and then, and then to know that that little human she gave birth to was her savior, was her creator's son. 
you know, to really truly understand that. And then to watch him grow into a man 33 years old and then to be put on a cross to die for her so that she could go to heaven, so that she could be forgiven of her sins, her own sin. Yeah. So, Merry Christmas. God loves you so much. And I love you guys. And in a world full of Grinches, be a Cindy Lou Who. You know, laughter is huge. Huge. We need to be laughing in all these crazy times. So, you know what my family's going to be doing? Have y'all seen that burrito game where you actually throw burritos at each other? We're going to be throwing burritos in the Vino house. Just the three of us. Because <laughs> we're COVID. But we're going to do a Zoom with my family, and I cannot wait. Because I'm going to get to see my cousins, and my dad, and my mom, my brother, my nieces, everybody. And I can't wait. So, Merry Christmas. God loves you. Reach out to me if you want to talk. Um, comment if you want to be added to my prayer book. Remember, I told you guys I was making changes. Got that character flaw where I don't remember, you know, after somebody tells me, you know, I'm going through this, can you pray for me? Oh, yes, yes, I'll pray for you. And I do, I do. But then I forget. Then I forget. One of the quirky things that God did with my brain. So, I am growing, changing my character flaw. I now have a prayer book and I already have names and dates and of people that I am praying for and checking on, not just praying for them, but I'm also making a point to check on them. So if you have a prayer request, let me know. And Merry Christmas. That's it. I'm done. I do love you guys. I will be praying for you, whether you put your name down or not. I got you covered. Love y'all.